All right, guys, welcome back. We are finally getting close to laying some carbon on Don's from Don Life's, link right there, his new C8 Corvette. I know what you guys are thinking. It's been a long video because we already did the video. If you're watching this, you've already seen the video of giving Don the hood. You've seen the video of uh, making the mold, but now we have to prep the mold for the carbon. And there's a whole process to that if you haven't done carbon fiber before, but if you're familiar with fiberglass, it's somewhat similar. So first of all, we're gonna hit this with a heavy layer of high temperature wax, and then we're gonna clear that off. Then we're gonna layer, hit it with a layer of PVA, which is essentially like a plastic film we're gonna spray on it. Then we're gonna hit it with a layer of gel coat. And the gel coat is essentially what you see when you look at the hood. You don't have to put it on, but it is UV protection towards the epoxy. So we definitely wanna lay that. So we're gonna put that down. Then on top of that, we're gonna lay our carbon, our first layer of carbon. Then we're gonna put in between the carbon a, a fairly good size piece of Kevlar to kind of give it some rigidity. And then on the back of that, we're gonna put some more carbon. And then you'll see we'll end up putting our tape all the way around here. First step is the mold release agent. Otherwise, whatever we put on here, we're not getting off. So let's start with that and then we'll keep cruising. Let's get it. I'm just putting on the final layer here. This one, the last layer, I always mix about a 70-30 ratio. 70% water, 30% PVA. And the reason is water atomizes better and it kind of helps lay the PVA out smoother. The first layer we put down on here is the layer you see. So that's where things can get tricky because this has a bit of a tack to it being unwaxed. And that's okay because it'll keep it in place for the vacuum infusion. But when you lay it, you basically have one shot to lay it. If you lift it, the carbon pulls apart. Carbon baffles my mind how strong it is for how weak it actually is when it doesn't have any resin in it. We're gonna lay our tape all the way around here. This tape is just on here to keep overspray off so that our actual bagging tape has a surface to stick to. Then we're gonna get into, we're gonna lay our first layer of carbon. And then we're gonna put, throughout most of it, we're gonna do a layer of Kevlar. We're gonna do a layer of Kevlar, and then we're gonna put another layer of carbon on top. Okay guys, well it was a bit of a shit show, but we managed to get it on there. I'm not confident how good it's going to look. You guys take it easy on me when we pull it apart. There is multiple layers on here. I know what you guys are thinking. Number one, I didn't want to waste carbon fiber. It is expensive and I don't have a lot of it. This is just kind of leftover shit. So uh, number two, you're not going to see it anyway. The inner shell covers all of that. So this is kind of good. It allowed some rigidity to it too, where it's overlapped. You know, some areas like for example, in the middle here between the carbon, the Kevlar, we're going to start laying our gum tape down. From there, you will see I'm gonna put down peel ply, which essentially is a layer of fabric that doesn't stick to anything. What the peel ply is gonna do is keep plastic and everything else from sticking on here. And then we're gonna layer a vacuum bag and then we're gonna have our inlet and outlet vacuum tubes. Now we've got our carbon and our peel ply and our flow media. And essentially what all these do is, like I'd mentioned, the peel ply keeps everything from sticking to the carbon. I did put a light spray of adhesive on there. And all that does is just keeps things kind of where they need to be. Next thing up that we need to do is we need to have our resin flow throughout the part. So I made this, don't laugh. So you can buy spiral tubing, but it's expensive and I'm cheap. So I made this and I just took a piece of hard tubing and split it with a knife all the way around and I put a vacuum tee on it. What we're going to do is we're going to secure this here across the part, something like that, and then we'll have our line come out. Essentially what that'll do is we're going to have a single vacuum line in on that end. That's going to create a vacuum. Maybe I'll make another thing like this. That'll create a vacuum on that end. And we'll have this clamped to this end, and when we open it, the resin will go in and it'll flow throughout here. And life is good, we hope. So I will secure this, and then I'm going to get the bag on there. We're putting down our bag, and that is going to seal the vacuum we're going to be feeding our resin from higher up so it can flow downhill and we're going to put it under vacuum make sure we have no leaks and then once we're sure of that we can pump it full of resin all right guys we've got the bag on there i did run it for a second there and fix a few small leaks so i will traditionally use just like a clamp and go around i've never done a mold this big something i want to touch on real quick is you could do everything perfect up to this point. You can have a perfect mold, lay the carbon perfect, have perfect prep. 
It takes one pinhole. What happens is, if it leaks air in there, it pulls it in through the vacuum, and then it'll go all the way into your epoxy. And it'll ruin everything. Everything up until now that you've worked for will be gone. So I'm gonna show you what you're listening for, because I do know I have a couple here, so I'm gonna turn on this vacuum pump. And what we're looking for is about 25 to 30 inches of vacuum. You can see what I was talking about where the bag is getting tighter and tighter and tighter. Okay, so that's 25 inches of vacuum. So if we go around and listen, you want absolute dead silence. You know what, I lied to you. I actually can't hear any vacuum leaks. I had some before, but maybe when I turned off the pump and went away. I guess it's time to finally after three weeks of working on this, put some resin in here and see if we can make the C8 Corvette hood. Something to note is that we're using clear coat um, epoxy resin and we're going to be mixing it at 43 to 100. The plan here is that it's going to pull vacuum on that end. And once we have enough vacuum in here, we'll crack the line over there, fill the line with resin and then close it again. Once we're back down to 25 inches of vacuum, we'll open it back up and we're gonna allow the resin to go in. Now, hopefully this line I made allows the resin to distribute across here as it moves across here and then in through over here on this side. So I just came back from lunch and uh, that doesn't sound too good. And we've got air everywhere, so I don't even know what to do right now. Leave it and see what happens, I guess, but that, <clears throat> that is no good. I think what happened was the pump died and stopped creating a vacuum. Now this is sealed, we tested this, but what I think happened is all of the air in the resin pot that collects the excess resin, I think it all backed up into here. So this is a disappointment for a few reasons. Number one reason is there's several hundred dollars in material here. You know, we spent a month making this mold to uh, get it to this point, all for my vacuum pump to die. Now, that said, the vacuum pump is very, very, very cold. It's just very unfortunate that it happened. Life goes on, I guess. We're gonna see how bad it looks. Maybe it's salvageable. I do have enough resin that I could top coat it if we want. So the nice thing about working with this Resin is that it uh, can be top coated within 72 hours without being sanded. And I run my garage a little bit cooler than most people would at night. Like it still has a bit of a tack to it. So uh, we'll see. But even just yesterday setting this all up, you know, there's hours of work there that are all just gone. sure it's worth trying to salvage. This whole side has an air pocket all the way down it. I must have tried bridging or something when I was there. There's an air pocket down there, air pocket there, another air pocket there, air pocket over here, another big one here, all the way down this side. So this thing's probably scrap, I guess, which is too bad. We're gonna have to redo it. Okay guys, it's time to get going on the structural or inner or lower part of the mold. I've pretty much prepped the whole thing. I got a few things I got to finish up yet, but I have concerns like usual. We could vacuum bag this, but to lay it in one piece of carbon, I think is going to be very difficult. And the reason being carbon like fiberglass will wrap, but it pulls apart. So we're going to have to lay this in several pieces. The vacuum bagging won't be bad, but I think I'm going to do a wet layup. I was thinking about doing an infusion, but for simplicity reasons, I think we're going to do a wet layup. So what that means is we're going to uh, essentially we'll put down some resin and then we'll put the carbon on top of it. I'm really hesitant about this because I don't have a lot of extra carbon. So we have one shot at this.
right, guys, we are getting close here to finishing this hood for Dawn. Again, I've never made a hood before. I'm very nervous on how this is gonna turn out. We did the carbon infusion yesterday on the top half. I'm just letting it cure. Uh, the epoxy I use is 36 hour cure uh, at 90% hardness, 25 degrees Celsius. The structure side of the hood is a little bit more complicated. I'm gonna take you guys for a walk around on things that I have that are concerns. Um, right now I've got the mold release agent, the PBA down. We're gonna do a wet layup on it, uh, essentially which means we're gonna put the carbon in. Then we're gonna put the epoxy on top and then we'll put the bag on top of it. All right, so our carbon's gonna come from here, down here, across, up to this edge. It'll probably come over to about here somewhere, but this is the trim line. So this is a really, not terrible angle for the carbon. It should flow that pretty good. I hope we don't end up with any air pockets in here from bridging. But then the problem is you come down here across and then immediately dip into where the hood adjusting screws go and then back up on that quarter inch lip, probably less than quarter inch lip and across. That's a, that's a concern. Obviously it's mirrored on both sides. Now, if you haven't worked with Kevlar, it's its own animal. It's much, much more rigid. It's much stronger. Well, I mean, they make the the best out of it. It doesn't cut where the shit, even with serrated scissors. It's uh, difficult. However, it is extremely strong. So where we put the nut certs in for the hinges and the latch, it's gonna add a lot more structural integrity. So a couple things, like, as I've mentioned lots with carbon fiber is funny. It takes one thing to ruin everything and you can do everything right. You can go and let's say you're making your mold and everything goes perfect. And then you go lay your carbon down and you have one little strand sitting there. It'll ruin your, the entire image of your carbon. Now again, I've never made a hood, so hopefully this works. I've made other stuff, but never a hood. But it's the same concept for the most part. Yeah, it looks good. Really good. Okay guys, so we got it out of the mold. It looks pretty good. Like I'd give it a seven, maybe a six and a half out of 10. Definitely some areas to touch up. I just poured water on it there to uh, start loosening up the PVA. The wipes off easier yeah overall you know i did end up putting an extra piece of kevlar in the hood latch and either corner of the hinges um, just to make sure dawn's got lots of support in there so next up we're going to we'll clean this pba off we'll give it a good wipe down and then we're going to start trimming out the structure piece and the top piece and then we're going to use some body panel adhesive we'll put them together we'll clamp them together and uh, let them sit for the night tomorrow we're going to come back and tomorrow when we come back we're going to start touching things up um, for example, this lower piece, uh, just because of the different transitions and everything, and I've never done a piece this complicated. Um, there is some air pockets in it. Not the end of the world, you know, Don's a DIY guy, a DIY guy, and uh, he appreciates everything people do. So um, he's gonna appreciate it regardless. Um, but of course, I personally want it to look as good as possible. You guys, we are getting close. So I just ran 80 grit over the edge there just to kind of clean everything up and also scuff the surface to make sure we have a good bite and bond for our body panel adhesive we're gonna be using. Let me grab it. It's a two-part body panel adhesive. Uh, it's good for 6,900 PSI. 
uh, should be more than enough. We don't need a lot of strength. So uh, essentially all we're doing is trying to keep them together and sealed. So I'm gonna start, I'll put a pretty good, I'm not gonna do a lot because it is very strong, but a generous amount because there is some high and low spots. And then it'll kind of fill it in. Then we're gonna clamp it down. We'll do the inner structure and the outer structure. And uh, we should be cruising. I did the test fit you saw in the time lapse there. Everything fit perfect. I'm amped. It, you know, it's cool. You work on something for over a month, every day, 10 hours a day, eight hours a day. Um, there might've been some naps in there, you just never know. And it's cool to see it finally come together. And for someone that is awesome and genuine and just an all around amazing person like Dawn, I'm just so excited to do this for him. I'm gonna clamp it, I'm gonna leave it for the night. I'm gonna come back tomorrow morning and we're gonna see how things are looking. Okay guys, we're getting close. I know I've said that a thousand times, but there's a lot of steps involved. This is the scary part. I wouldn't say it's what separates the boys from the men, but it definitely puts your nerves on edge. This is the final shaping. So we're gonna use the orbital sander and go around, clean everything up, clean up any uh, rough edges, bad edges, stuff like that. This is the part that is, could make or break things. And both sides, I accidentally went through too far. I punched a hole in the top of the carbon fiber on both sides. Luckily enough, I think I'm able to repair it. I'm going to know in a few hours here. I'm going to give it to Don regardless. I mean, it'll look good on his wall if he doesn't want to put it on his car, understandably. Carbon fiber is very finicky that way. It takes nothing to ruin it. So, you know, all the more respect to the guys that absolutely crush it and kill it. That said, uh, yeah, final shaping. I'm going to go around all the edges with the orbital, clean everything up, and make sure everything is where it needs to be. I think first I'm gonna go around with a Sharpie and kind of draw it out so I can see it. And then uh, away we go. Okay guys, check it out. So this is it. Um, I'm delivering it to Dawn right away here. It's still kind of actually tacky, um, but we're gonna get going. It does have some dust in it, obviously not the ideal environment to do something like this, but what are you gonna do? You gotta work with what you have to work with. I'm not gonna build a paint booth in here. Not a bad idea. Um, anyway, I'm gonna take this to Dawn the way it is. Um, there is some dust in it though, but you know what? Like this is kind of a, pro not a prototype hood because I didn't design it. Um, it's just, my first stab at making something like this. I just wanna say I appreciate you guys watching it though, because you know what, it was uh, it was fun. You guys have already watched the video of me delivering it to Don um, because I'm uploading this after. I think he's gonna think it's cool because you know, even if he hangs out on his wall, Don's all about doing it yourself stuff. And if you watch Don's channel, I'll put a link in my bio, or my link in my description. Um, but yeah, let's take a look. I'll give you guys a quick montage of it. And that's it, thanks for watching. See you on the next one.